Welcome back. The Prime Minister has promised to tackle the issues that have led to so many young people carrying knives. Mrs May has been accused of presiding over reductions in police numbers and cuts to youth services, which have contributed, perhaps, to a rise in knife crime. She was speaking following a weekend in which two uh, teenagers were stabbed to death. 17-year-old Jodie Chesney was killed in a park in East London on Friday night. And the following day, Yusuf Ghaleb Maki, also 17, was knifed in Hale Barnes in Greater Manchester. Well, I'm joined now by Jennifer Blake, a former gang member and founder of the Safe and Sound Youth Project, uh, which aims to reduce levels of gang, knife and gun crime among young people. Jennifer, thanks very much for joining us. Um, so why do you think the use of knives, are, knives are, is increasing and why are the victims getting younger? Mm. Um, the increase of knife is that young people is not easy to get out of a gun. So knives are easy to obtain. Amazon, parents, cupboards, shops are selling them. So it, again, it, when you say rise in knife crime as such, knife crime has been going on for a long time. I think because the media caught, catches on to it, um, there's, there's more media around it, but knife crime is something that's been happening for so many years. Young people have been carrying for a long time. And it's because you say they can't get hold of guns? Well, it's, it's harder to get hold of a gun, um, sure. you know, but to get hold of a knife, it's, it's so much easier. And it, you can see that. Um, the prices of guns on the streets, just to get hold of a gun, th th there's a big price for that. So the easiest thing to get hold of is a knife. So you were in a gang for 10 years, more than 10 years, mm. in London. Did you carried a knife, did you? I did. Um, it, was, it, it was a normal thing to carry a knife back then, as it is as young people see it. It's different. Um, it, it, they used to call it a ratchet, so it was like a flick knife. And it was part of my attire. It was something that I, I always had. So you um, always went out with it? Always went out um, with it. Did knife. you use it? Uh, to threaten people, to knife point robberies, um, you know, hold my hands up. That is the things that I used to do. And that was completely normal. Well, it, well, to well, carry knives. Well, to carry knives and, and have Why? knives. Why? Because you worried about being yourself threatened by a knife. Well, put it this way: when you're on the street, you've got to look at things of where how are you going to protect yourself. Um, if you're on the street and drugs was a thing that I was involved in, um, it was a thing where it's there to protect me. It's there to frighten people. You know, so it it was just there. Today's young people in carrying knife, it's the same thing. It's a thing about protecting. Again, it's a, again when you're going to rob somebody, you're going to use a knife, you, you're going to brandish a knife, whichever way. So at the end of the day, there's nothing changed as much as where, where we used to carry it. It's just the way that young people are now killing each other. Yeah, and you mentioned drugs there. What is the, you know, what impact does drugs, particularly skunk, this strong type of skunk that can affect people, Psychologically, what impact does that have, do you think? The smoking of the skunk has a, has a huge impact. And the fact that it's something where young people are selling on the streets, that's the other impact to it. Now, when you're smoking skunk, um, I used to smoke um, cannabis. There was a stage in the, let's say, um, 90s, late 90s, where there was a, a lack of um, commercial um, cannabis. So it, the skunk came in and I honestly could, saw the difference in my behaviour, my attitude when I smoked the skunk. So there, there, there's a big difference in the psychotic behaviour um, that I was um, displaying. I see it in so many of the young people that are smoking the skunk. So, so what is the way forward here in your view? You know, Theresa May says it's not about police officers mm -hmm. on the streets. That it, what, what, in your view, is it about police officers or is it about tackling the problem you've just been talking about, you know, drugs? What is, where do you think the solution or possible solution lies? There's many solutions. And I think the problem that we're doing is that we're just... We're looking at the solution of knife crime. We're not looking at solutions of other issues that are relating to the knife crime. So a lot of emphasis is placed on the knife crime itself. We have a lot of young people that are out there witnessing um, young people being stabbed, their friends being stabbed, trying to save them, you know, body parts out on the road. What support goes out to those young people that's going through that trauma to see that? So we tend to work in isolation. I say we because you've got government in one place, the policing in one place. So everybody's saying something different and nobody's coming, co coming together collectively to say, look, this is a problem that we've got. We've got to all come together.
So policing, do you know what? Unless you're gonna have a police on every single corner of a street, then fine, but we can't afford that. So let's, let's come together government, policing, health, mental health has to come into it because there's a lot of mental health issues that are going on with our young people. Nobody listened to me when I was explaining about my situation and, and what I was going through and I was under the care of social services. Could you have been persuaded to leave the gang? Could you have been persuaded to give up a life of carrying a knife and a possible life of violence? I won't sit down and say, well, yes, because at the time it was this glamorous lifestyle that I wanted to live. So I'm not going to say yes, well, you know, if, if I had that direction. But at the same time, if I had individuals that were listening to me, like how I'm now listening to what young people are saying, then they've, they're setting a, I'm setting a foundation for them to listen, to see if there's a chance for them to move forward. But I wasn't listened to. I was just looked at as that I, I was rude, I was I had behaviour issues, sent to the court, the courts dealt with it, and that was it. Nobody, not a social worker, looked at my situation and said, well, do you know what? She's been groomed into it. She's been sexually exploited into it. All of that is, is ignored. And was that the case, in your case, that was what happened? That is the case in what happened. To and me. so if someone had come to you, not necessarily the police, but mm. someone else had come to you and said, look, this is what we need to do with you, you would have been willing to, to, to try and sort of embrace that? Or would, was the gang life so exciting? And no, it was you often was so me. adrenaline, gave you that, you know, sort of meaning to your life? Was, was, that, was, that, was that what was happening? Let's just say that nobody was offering me anything different. Whereas, whereas if I'm speaking to a young person, I've experienced that, I'm now speaking to them and I'm there able to offer them something, another solution. So if they take it now or later on, they say, do you know what? I heard what Jennifer said and do you know what? Jennifer, I really want to try that. Then that's a chance for them. But if they're not getting a solution, all they're being told is that you're bad, you know, you're, 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 you're going to turn out to be nothing, you're going to die, you're going to end up in prison. That's, that's what they've got in their head.